Hey guys. <laughs> um, this might not work with these special glasses on because the reflection is blocking out my eyes. But what these are that I'm wearing here are called blue light blockers. And Rob went to find his. But what they do is they block the blue light coming off of your device. And so I said to Rob, let's hop on Facebook. Let's go live. Let's talk to people about sleep and about how it affects our health and wellness, our, our emotions and all the things. <laughs> so we both have on our blue light blockers. Nice uh, halo glare. I know. We can't wear these long. <laughs> we can wear them a little while. <laughs> so how do you guys feel tonight? You excited about the holidays? We wanted to come out um, on here live tonight because we, we thought we had another appointment right now, but we actually didn't. And so we were like, well, let's put on the blue light blockers. Let's go live. Let's talk about how important sleep is. Let's um, show everyone these glasses and see if anyone else has them. I know Laura Wells has them. So go ahead and tag your teams. We're going to be talking about a super important subject, something that takes a third of your life. And if you're not getting it in good quality and enough quantity, you will suffer. So, honey, how would you start this off? I can't keep wearing these. I, I feel too funny. What do you think? <laughs> uh, so we're standing in front of this ring light, which you can see reflected in the glasses here. And it's like alien bright. I know. Um, the things we do to teach. So uh, <laughs> It's not even bright enough for you, honey. It's plenty bright. It's <laughs> way too bright. I All try right. to yeah. limit my blue light exposure in the evening. Tell them and, why. Tell them uh, why. The reason being because um, when you have blue light, so it, it sort of mimics the sun. You know, the the lights that most of us use uh, limit this, or they uh, produce a spectrum um, of light that's mm -hmm. similar to the sun. It's a blue light, and uh, the blue light basically what it does is it suppresses melatonin. Melatonin obviously being the sleep hormone, so it's kind of a big deal. Um, when you wake up in the morning, it's a good thing to be um, exposed to light. And so I have a light that I use that uh, shines bright in my face when I'm working on my computer, <laughs> answering emails, doing things like that. Because you have a dark office on the north side of the house. Yep. So, well, it's also dark when I get up. Should we take off our view. glasses no, now? I'm leaving them on. Honey, come on. Um, They're driving me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, you want to. I feel like we're wearing a filter. You want to expose yourself to bright light in the morning and throughout the day. There's light but in as my you head. get into uh, evening time, you want to uh, try to limit the amount of um, blue light that you're getting. And what are the sources of blue light? Well, number one thing is your phone, obviously. Staring at a computer screen, uh, television, any of that stuff. Um, it all is stimulating. It causes uh, cortisol to be released and it causes melatonin to be suppressed. So those are sort of the opposite um, things of what you actually want to be happening in the evening. Um, in the evening, you want to try and uh, have darker uh, rooms, darker spaces that you're, you're staying in. Um, dim the lights. Dim the lights. So I actually just installed a dimmer on my office lights today. You didn't um, tell me that. Yeah. So... Uh, you know, you can do a lot of things. You can change your bulbs. There's um, a place called Lighting Science that has some good bulbs that um, more naturally mimic the spectrum that you would get during the day and at night. Um, but the, the whole reason, I mean, this is sort of a, you know, a way you can sort of hack um, sleep a little bit and try and get the most um, quality. We talked about quality and quantity. This is a way you can try and get the, the best of both uh, when you're sleeping. Um, and that's important, obviously, because sleep is hugely, uh, it's, it's so influential on all aspects of your life, everything from physical health to mental health, immune status, uh, your hormones, everything, your diet, sleep has a major effect on your uh, diet. Doesn't your hair look great? Yeah. You said it done today. <laughs> uh, and there's ample evidence to show that if you're sleep deprived, we tend to have a um, much worse diet pattern the next day. Oh my gosh, so can I just share? Including the need for more sugary foods to give us energy where we don't have energy from being well slept. Yeah. So back in the day, before Thrive, four and a half years ago, <clears throat> and many years before, four and a half years ago, I noticed a pattern for myself. If I didn't get a good night's sleep, I wanted to have a triple shot latte with caramel or mocha, 
whipped cream, and then during the afternoon, I would want to have something from the bakery or make chocolate chip cookies or grab handfuls of chocolate chips from the pantry. And I, I realized that if I was tired, I wanted to have more sugary junk foods. Did any of you guys feel that way or notice that? So with the Thrive Experience, what I noticed was... Hi, Barbara. Thank you for the hat. <laughs> yeah. She sent him the nicest hat from Boston to thank him for all of the help and support. That was so sweet of you, Barbara. Thank you. Um, but anyway, with my Thrive Experience, I noticed I started to sleep better, so I didn't have the cravings for the junk. As many. And my mood improved. And guess what I learned about the sleep cycle. So this is really fascinating because when we first started, I'm not the medical science person like Rob is, and he was kind of just watching and observing for the first four months, and I was building the business and, you know, selling the products, but I, did, I wasn't the, de the ingredients guru, but I was noticing common threads between people who started the Thrive Experience. And one of the things I noticed was they started to sleep better at night. They quit drinking or craving the coffee because so many people had like a love relationship with coffee. They would talk about it so passionately. And I remember talking to Rob one day. We were like that too. Well, okay. You had a thousand dollar espresso machine. Okay, you're right. <laughs> Like I did, I, he's correct, I did. I bought this Italian espresso machine for myself for Christmas because I gave myself a Christmas gift that year because I was like, oh my gosh, it's the longest winter ever. I'm gonna give myself this espresso <clears throat> machine so I can get through the winter. But the problem was that I was drinking these triple um, shot lattes in the morning and then feeling like crap and wanting to go through the drive-through at Starbucks um, go to Target and push a cart around the store, filling it up with needless crap while drinking these uh, Starbucks drinks. And well, that all changed. I got that in December of 2013. I started thriving in February of 2014, just two months later. And then I quit making espresso. You guys, I almost wanted to stop my Thrive experience because I felt so much guilt for having bought a really nice Italian espresso machine. In fact, I held on to it. How many years? We gave it away last summer. Last summer? I held on to it for four <laughs> years. That's what an incredible... We, we moved it. <laughs> espresso machine it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So bad, so bad. And bread. Remember how much bread I used to eat? You don't? You're talking to me or them? I'm looking at you in the mirror. No. I mean, the uh, camera. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> I love bread so much you still love bread I do but I don't crave it like I used to just crave these things you guys and um, with my thrive experience all of the nutritional gaps started to get filled and I quit craving now Rob correct me if I'm wrong but my philosophy is from my observation is that nutrients were historically found in sugary salty and fatty foods before modern times Hmm, well. Like when when food wasn't plentiful and it was scarce. People were, were, were um, what is it well, called, foraging for food. Yeah, and it was much harder to find. It was seasonal, like fruits, you know, were yeah. the main source of sugar and they were mm -hmm. only around a certain parts of the year and so people would gorge on them. But, uh, no, so don't you these... think my theory is right? Mm -hmm. It's a theory. I'm like, yeah, sure. it is. <laughs> now all these uh, sources of food, none of them are seasonal. You can get anything you want any time of the day, any time of the year from just about any place in town. Um, and obviously we're seeing the ramifications of that. Yeah. So, but wait a minute. Here's the other thing I noticed. Because I used to be really moody and emotional and just basically blah feeling almost all the time. And you were like a basket case. Me? Yeah, you. You were so, you, yes, you were so stressed out. <clears throat> you were. You were working all the time. You were drinking so much coffee. You were. Your sleepless nights, your headaches. You forgot. Yeah, maybe I did. I did. Life forget. is so good now. Though. I know, it's so I good. So it. what happened um, back then that I noticed, after I started thriving, I started sleeping better. I didn't crave the coffee. I would still make it. Like, I think it was kind of like my comfort routine, and I would still make it. <clears throat> um, but I noticed about the second or third week, I wasn't even craving it. Then my sleep improved. You all, this is incredible. 
so because I wasn't messing up my sleep cycle by taking, by drinking so much caffeine and eating all those processed foods during the day, I was actually starting to go to sleep better at night. And here's something I learned. My mood improved, but guess what? When you have a healthy sleep routine, your body actually, or which part of your brain is it? The hypothalamus? Uh, it's one of them, yeah. Um, produces the melatonin. You don't know which part of yeah. the melatonin does. Anyway, when you produce the melatonin, that's the precursor hormone for serotonin, which you produce, produce more of in the morning when you have a healthy production of melatonin at night, right? Which is the feel-good hormone. It's the one that's um, su supplemented when you are depressed, typically, serotonin. Mm -hmm. Incredible information. What else I learned was when you get adequate sleep, your body actually has a higher likelihood of releasing the weight. Tell them about that. Uh, yeah, so that's again tied to, I mean, both appetite and also um, especially cortisol production. So cortisol, if you are underslept, mm -hmm. we tend to be more stressed. Um, we tend to have more of a cascade of these hormones, the stress hormones, specifically cortisol. Um, and when you do, you tend to um, hold fat or even put fat on because your body's in a time of stress and it feels like it needs to um, kind of go into conservation mode. So Pack on the pounds to yeah. those of you speaking the common English language. Yeah. And so, <laughs> you know, there's sort of this twofold um, negative um, feedback loop that we have about this time of year because maybe threefold so it gets darker right yes. earlier we don't have as much time to be outside burning energy uh, when we're when the sun's out and we're outside doing stuff we tend to um, burn more of just our daily energy stores which makes us sleep better right mm -hmm. exercise does make you sleep better there's uh, no doubt about that um we tend to uh, be a little more stressed whether it's financially or just with all family and the travel and all the things going on in the holidays and then there's mm -hmm. always obviously the uh, food issue there's a lot more uh, really low quality uh, food and it's abundant and lots and lots of sugar yeah. and so you add all these things up and that's why there's such a, a big problem with um, seasonal weight gain seasonal depression um, all these things that we see during the, the winter months I, I also feel like when when you gain weight around the holidays, for mm. example, because it's um, I think I read that the average weight gain during the holidays is 10 pounds and you don't lose all of it each year. So that's why they call it the slow creep. <clears throat> Who knows the statistic? How many pounds do people on average gain over the holiday? Um, so the negative feedback loop about that, you guys, is that, that you get through... Right, you go Thanksgiving, Christmas, and people start going, ah, oh, what the heck, I'll just have that cocktail or I'll eat those Christmas cookies or whatever. There's nothing wrong with having some of these things in moderation, but the moderation word is key. But they're habit forming. And yeah, also, if so you're, addictive. If you're not sleeping as well, then you tend to reach for those things right. like coffees and energy drinks. More likely. And that's uh, another very quickly habit forming um, hobby. But then there's the emotional component too. I mean, raise your hand, be honest, who's felt guilty for having excess <laughs> sweets or treats during the holidays and then sabotaged and said, oh, screw it, who cares? I already ate all that blah, blah junk. And um, the cycle continues. And then you go into the negative guilt spiral. Anybody? Anybody? Am yeah. I the only not, one? Not to mention that uh, people <laughs> tend to feel worse about themselves and yeah. their confidence goes down if they gained a little weight. Right. Um, and I mean, it's frankly depressing and then you know you have to mm -hmm. work harder to yeah. uh, you know, get the weight off and that can be something that is sort of daunting mm -hmm. to think about. But it's good for people who own gyms. Right. Well, and so then let's talk about this too because then you go into New Year's and New Year's resolution and you'll have people who are like, they, they throw in the towel in terms of their eating plan and choosing wellness over self-discipline really, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so then they get into the new year and then they're like, okay, I'm all in, I'm New Year's resolution. But guess what? Like 90% of people who make a New Year's resolution have given up on it by the second week. Do you know why? because it takes 28 days to form a habit. So now, honey. And it's hard. Right. Anything that's harder is harder. <laughs> like, 
like people will bag out on it. So tell, give them some tips. Um, can you give them some tips on how to keep their sleep together this holiday season? Um, yeah, sure. So, uh, you know, starting with something like food or drinks, mm -hmm. um, you know, everyone wants to have some treats, right? There's lots of good stuff, things you don't normally get to eat and you look forward to maybe all year. Um, but instead of having eight cookies, have one. Mm -hmm. um, instead of having several drinks, you know, just have one. Or um, if you have several, make them little baby drinks or something. I um, mean, you got to remember the alcohol connection with mm. calories because once oh. you start to oh, have some alcohol, it's like, oh, well, maybe I should have a couple more cookies. Okay. Because... And I should have something. Yeah. <laughs> so, you guys, if you watch Netflix, there's a video called The Science About Alcohol or what's called What Alcohol Does To You or something like that. Anyway, in it, it was a documentary where they were doing these research studies and people were, they had two different teams and one team got non-alcoholic beer and one team got alcoholic beer, but they didn't know. They thought they were doing a mind um, study for like a quiz to see if alcohol was affecting their brains. That was how they kept the study scientific. Is that the word? Mm -hmm. Unbiased by Unbiased. The people. So... Here's what they found, you guys. Guess what? The ones who were drinking the alcoholic beer drank or ate, consumed 500 more calories than the other people who were drinking a non-alcoholic beer. This is incredible. This so is incredible. So what it was is they were take they were both taking a like an IQ test or some mm -hmm. sort of a test and they yeah. had um, beer and snacks for mm -hmm. one group and beer, non-alcoholic beer and the right? same snacks for the other group. And yeah. Then, um, over like a 2-hour period, yeah, yeah, the people who were drinking alcohol ended up uh, eating that, quite a bit more. So not only are you getting the calories from the alcohol consumption, but you're getting the excess calories from the extra food you naturally, your brain just turns off, I guess, different filters and mm. triggers you to want to eat more. So back to mm. your question, what can people do? Yeah. Um, oh wait, I had one more thing. No, sorry. No, no I have just... a really good thing. Okay, really good. And then I'll let you talk. Really good thing is drink water first. Also, eat the veggies first. So you're drinking, um, before you leave the house, if you're going to a holiday party, drink a big old glass of water before you go. Then when you get to your destination, drink a big old glass of water. Maybe choose a lighter alcohol content. Bring your own drinks. I bring mean, your own we, drinks. We go to places. We, do, um, we often do. We bring, bring like water. sparkling water and yep. you can put some lime in it or something. It looks like a cocktail. Yeah, because some people feel it's funny sparkly. about not drinking cocktails when everyone's drinking cocktail. So just have sparkling water with a lime in it if you want to skip the alcohol this year. Yeah. See what happens. I mean, what's going to hurt? Yeah, the other thing is... Um, what about the veggies idea I had? Veggies is great. I eat my veggies first thing when I sit down See? to a uh, <laughs> meal. I, once I've gotten through all my veggies, then I'll um, usually eat the meat. And then last would be any sort of those treaty things. Yeah. If I still have room. Uh, anyway, the next thing I was going to say is, you know, set some goals for yourself. Um, okay, maybe your goal is to not gain any weight. Maybe your goal is to stay super fit or get fitter during the holidays. Okay. Um, it doesn't matter what it is really, as long as you have something that you're working towards and then share that goal with people. So if you go to Thanksgiving dinner and your goal is to stay fit during the holidays and maybe lose some weight even, then tell people that. And yeah. so... Um, if you're going to reach for that second cookie, then your mom or your sister or whatever is going to be like, hey, I thought you were trying to lose weight. What so if they the more... said the opposite to you, though? What if they were like, oh, but it's Christmas, you have to eat it. Because people do that pressure. Mm, they do, don't true. they? Then just stick what to your guns. Say? say, I mean, for me personally, this is my <laughs> philosophy on treats. Um, everybody thinks that... Everybody who knows me um, and eats around me thinks that I don't like treats and I don't like sugar. That's not true. We had eggnog last night. Yeah, it's not true. <laughs> but uh, more than I like sweets and treats, I like being 42 years old and fit and having a six pack. Yeah, um, super I mean, hot. like being healthy is gives me confidence and makes me feel feel way better about myself every single day, all day than that. Uh, you know, cookie is ever going to. Uh, may give me, you know, in terms of like sort of some sort of happiness boost. So um, just think long term, you know, think what your plans are and try to stick to that goal. Um, so tell people about it and that can help to um, reinforce your own decisions because even if someone isn't necessarily helping you, uh, you know that you've told them what your goals are and um, just by having shared that, it's going to make you maybe more self-conscious about sticking to your uh, habits. Another thing is, you know, exercise um, obviously mm -hmm. is a big deal. If you are really concerned about 
um, you know, your exercise regimen and putting on holiday weight, you know, try something new. Try a new class, try like a workout DVD. Um, workout buddy. Workout, yep. A workout partner is always great. Someone to help motivate you if you have that opportunity. Um, there were years where when we moved, um, like when I was in PA school, I mean, I would exercise at the gym at school, um, but like I didn't have any money for a, a gym membership, right? I was just going to the gymnasium and the college I went to. Um, but I also had like a workout DVD. I had P90X back in the day. And I did it for like four years in a row. And the thing was, it was great. It kept me in good shape. It was easy to do. You, you don't have to worry about getting in your car and driving somewhere. You don't need much equipment at all. Um, something like that that gives you the opportunity to exercise, but um, sort of voids all the normal excuses. You know, I did it in my garage. I did it in my basement. It didn't matter. Um, you could just turn it on and work out for 30 minutes or whatever. And... Uh, you know, those are the types of things. It's it's a lot easier again if you have goals in mind, things that you know you want to do, um, and then just being sort of consistent with the types of excuses that you come up with and being ready for them. Oh, I don't have time because of X, or I just want to you know try this one thing. Um, this looks so good, but um, remember that you're always gonna your brain's always gonna try to rationalize your decisions. And so, um, it's really easy, it's really easy to cave in, but if you put up just a little resistance, it's pretty easy to fool your brain and, uh, make that also, good decision actually. It's very helpful when you have somebody who also has a goal of having a healthy holiday season this year. And so for me, I know Rob and I were great for accountability for each other and we choose to have less alcohol, we have less of the treats, we exercise throughout the holidays. And I'll be honest, the last four years, I have not gained weight <clears throat> during the holiday season. Hmm. And part of it is because of the accountability we have for one another. Now, if you don't have a partner in your home that could be your accountability partner, well then have an accountability partner with somebody on this chat. Like you guys, if you want an accountability buddy for the holidays, drop a comment below and you guys can match up because I'm telling you, there is strength in numbers when we do things together because like he said, your brain can rationalize bad decisions, but if you know that you're gonna be chatting with your buddy and you're gonna be saying, oh, this was so tempting today and they might remind you, well, go drink a glass of water. That's probably what your body needs. Um, it's so good yeah. to do that. And to that end, a little friendly competition goes a long way. Oh yeah. <laughs> so you're telling yourself, well, gosh, if uh, Gina's not going to have, you know, any wine this weekend, well, I'm not either. Right. So I love that idea. Yeah. Also, um, I had another idea, too, to share with you guys, but now I, I can't think of it. <laughs> so it wasn't too important. But we, we just wanted to come on, you guys, because we had a quick half hour to spare, and we thought, you know what? Talking about sleep and prioritizing our health in, during the holiday season is really important. So let me challenge you all um, this week to give yourself a very special self-care day because we give so much to others. Um, what I want you to do is set a plan for yourself, take rest, go to bed an hour early, maybe you just read a book, but don't go and watch anything or look at your phone and get up, at a nice time in the morning, take your capsule, then go and listen to a meditation. You can use the Calm app, you can use Breathe app, you can go on YouTube and listen to the Universal Mind Meditation by Kelly Howell, and do the meditation. Set your intention for the day that that day you're gonna make good, healthy choices, prioritizing yourself first. Give yourself permission to say no to what doesn't feel good. Okay, because everybody during the holidays is pulled this way and that way. And when we're stretched too thin and we're running to do this and that, and we have so much going on, then we will have high levels of the stress hormones, cortisol and adrenaline. Those are hormones that encourage the body to pack on the pounds. So make that decision that you're going to give yourself that self-care first thing in the morning, or you're going to bed earlier in the evening, maybe you take a rest, maybe you take a detox bath with two cups of Epsom salt, lavender essential oil, 
detox it all out. Imagine those um, irritating cares or things that you can't change, the people that are drama, and just let those all drain down the drain. <laughs> you can or get a sauna. Oh yeah, sauna is incredible. That might be a good gift for yourself. Um, Infrared sauna. And we've all seen the Christmas story and Christmas vacation and all that. It's so easy to get sucked into those types of things as right. well. But sometimes um, I enjoy them. I'm going to watch them. Well, yeah, you can. But what I was going to say okay. is if I am watching, um, say, a movie with Elise or with the kids or something, which we rarely do, but if it happens... Um, <laughs> oftentimes, you like if I haven't done anything else the rest of that day, if it's not been a real active day, then I'll do squats and push-ups and pull-ups and stuff during yeah, the movie. And you, you can still I don't, do that stuff and does. watch the movie and enjoy <laughs> it or stretch or give yourself a little massage or do something. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have to be just sitting there like a zombie. And you don't do that. Staring at the screen. <laughs> Um, you can make it productive still. I, I also love doing yoga with one of the yoga apps, even if it's just a five or ten minute routine. Just doing something is incredible for our bodies. We're designed to move. Um, so with that, I hope you all will have an incredible Thanksgiving. And if you enjoyed this video, let us know because we're really, really excited to share the knowledge that we have. Um, and personally, I like just visiting with you guys and it's fun when I can get Rob on even if he ha insists on wearing the blue light blockers because of the because of the ring light that's what we're doing here if you're just joining us see these are the blue light blockers see I have mine too but then I got annoyed at looking at myself with them on so I took them off <laughs> okay thanks you guys for tuning in any closing thoughts honey sleep well tonight that's right love you guys talk soon